calling the meeting, December 14th meeting. Wait, my, my machine keeps talking to me and I can't hear you. Um, I'm calling the meeting, the December 14th meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee to order, it's about 1134. And present are me, Myra Ross, I believe Elise Link is here. Yes. And I believe Sarah Darren is here. Yes. And I believe Marty Smith may be here. Uh-oh. So we don't have a quorum. Yeah, we do. Because we only have six members. Yep. But it's not, um, I, I know that Tori Dixon may come later, but she's not able to be here now. Is that you, so Marty? Marty's joining. Yeah, Marty's now back. Now we have the quorum. Yay. Yeah, we had one before, but this is a better quorum. Hi, Marty. This is not about solar. This is the real meeting now. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was, I was having connection problems. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and I believe that Ruth Smith has told us that she will not be able to be here. Ruth and, we have, um, and uh, Tori. Tori Dixon will be later, I think. Uh, they both might. Uh, they're both maybes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So we have a big agenda. The first thing on the um, announcements, and I think we can get to it later, is I sent a letter around um, that Paul Bockelman had sent me. Um, and I, I think we can discuss that later under things that come up under the last, not in the last 48 hours. Um, <laughs> but I think I sent that around to everybody. Um, the other, um, we can get to the new business. The first thing is about the uh, lockbox program that I believe, Saren, you had asked about. Yes. Um, do we have a presenter about that or are you gonna do it, Maureen? We have- um, Okay, that should be- Helen, yeah. Helen, right, Helen um, right. senior services. Actually, I think we might have, we'll, we'll just let her introduce herself. Um, is this Betsy? It is Betsy. Betsy Hi, Matthews. Betsy. Hi, Myra. Oh, how are you doing? God. Good. How are you how doing? Are you? Fair enough. This That's is what I do to stay time. out of trouble. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah. but you know that. Yeah, you never <laughs> did. No. Um, <laughs> anyhow. Um, so recognize I, the theme, Marty. <clears throat> anyway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyhow. Um, so tell me what I can tell you. I am, you know, here and willing, but quite mystified as to what you're interested in and how I can help well, you. I think that, uh, Saren, do you want to explain why you were interested? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I was watching a local news uh, channel maybe about two months ago, and it was one of the, like, maybe South Hadley or some, I can't remember exactly, and they were installing lock houses on people's uh, doors for elderly people and disabled people. And I thought, wow, that's very interesting. So then I brought this up at our next meeting. So that's all I know about it. Okay, and, that well, would be more, and that would be more than I know about it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm ahead of you guys and I can impart a little bit of information. We have uh, a safe entry program that run through the Senior Center and the SALT Council. And I think as we've been, my husband and I have been working just on the installation part for, oh, maybe about a, how long has COVID been going on? Anyway, probably Almost about- two years. Okay, maybe then, maybe about three and a half years we've been doing this. Um, it's a longstanding program. I think about well over a hundred have been installed around town. Um, and what we do is install you know, a uh, combination lockbox at the entrance of a home. And in, there's a key to the house available in this. And the uh, passcode is provided, uh, kept by all the emergency services. So if there were a need to enter the home, um, they have access to a key. Hmm. So okay. how stable is this box once it is installed? Oh, it's very stable. It's very secure. It's inconspicuous when it's in place. Um, my, 
my notion of its sort of practicality and its uh, reliability is uh, our daughter lives in a large city and we've noticed there that many of these are mounted, you know, multiple ones, half a dozen um, on the outside of apartment places. So I think if they're right there on the city street that you can assume they're very secure. And uh, oh, one of our recipients did check with their uh, homeowner's insurance and the insurance company gave them a thumbs up as being, you know, uh, not a risk of any sort. So who is eligible to get them? Is there a fee involved? How does one sign up? And how do people find out about it if they're not at this meeting or if they didn't know about it some other way? Okay, it's offered um, each month. It's listed in the senior spirit um, uh -huh. as a, you know, a, a service provided. Um, what uh, is the senior spirit? It's the senior center newsletter. So it goes to everyone who's over what age? Any, everyone over 60 receives this in town. And um, yeah. Yeah. So it's advertised it that way. Or oh. you know, it, it, uh, uh, donation is, is, you know, optional, but no, many, it's free. There's no charge for the box. They're provided by the Sheriff's Department of the county. So there would be a donation to the Senior Center? Is that um, how it would? Let me, I think to the Salt Council, the donation goes to the Senior and Law Enforcement Together Council. We're right on the edge of my understanding of the overlapping sort of provenance and uh, uh, services provided here. Um, but you do the actual installation? Yeah, so my, hus my husband has screwdrivers and I can make people fill out papers. So we both are, you know, <laughs> dealing with our strengths here. Hey, you're working in English at least. So <laughs> this 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 box has a code on it. So yes. say some mischievous young guy okay. just unscrews it and takes it home with him. Oh, to he, he, it can't, out. He, he can't unscrew it because the screws are inside the locked part. Oh. Yeah. So I don't know how much how visible this is, but I'll do the best. So here's the box opened and you can see the screw holes through it. I That's see. a chamber where you could keep a key where the key is kept and then it snaps shut and locked and it has you know, your four um, you know, discs for setting a numerical code. And um, these, again, this is meant for the emergency services. It's not where you keep your key for your you know, your neighbor or your dog right, sitter. Right, right. Um, and these digits are, I think, intentionally um, odd looking. So you can't come and just sort of fool around looking for a combination. If you, if you know what you're gonna put in, you can, you know, bring it up, but you can't stand there twiddling dials looking for numbers because it's just not inviting. So it, I, that's actually a good security element in these. Um, do you know the combination to your own box? Yes, you said it. In Amherst, you do. And that's because uh, you know, mm -hmm. you've know you come upon this in another town. Different communities do have a different sort of standard around that. But in Amherst, the, you know, the homeowner or the recipient sets the code. So yes, mm -hmm. you would have access to it. The emergency services discourage that in part um, because keys go off in people's pockets and occasionally they've come and found the box empty. Um, but it is, it is set by the, the homeowner or the recipient. Okay. And so the instructions about how to use it are in the senior spirit. So we'd have to talk to the senior center about the publicity of it. But, yeah, okay. right, right. Um, well, I, w I wouldn't say the the instructions on how to access this service yeah, are in the senior spirit. Okay. 
And okay, I can email everyone the uh, electronic form. So if anyone's okay. interested in signing up for this um, service, I, I can email the form and, and then um, you, you can fill it out and send it to uh, Betsy. Okay. I do so have a question. Go I ahead. do too. Um, this is Tori. Oh, and you're here. Yay. Do you have to be a senior? I'm not a senior yet. <laughs> that I don't know. Um, let me see if I get a little uh, reference here, a little input. Do they have to be seniors? At this point, it's only seniors. So we uh, have to work through the SALT Council with that, I guess. Okay. Okay. Um, right okay. now, it is limited to seniors. Um, we would have to, uh, perhaps someone could approach the SALT Council to see what their capacity is for taking on, uh, you know, additional a broader need in the community. Right now, for example, we have no boxes and we have two people who we were volunteering to do this. So I know the fire Hello. department also installs these. Hello. Um, Hi. Which may Hi. be another source, but again, how these sort of integrate with the SALT Council and the Senior Center Service, I'm not really clear. Okay. So my so, question is, because I'm a person with a disability, and so that's the question is, would people with people who have disabilities who are not seniors be eligible? So I, can, I can't give an authoritative answer to that. I could check or someone could check with the SALT Council. Or the fire I department. Can do that. Or I, 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 I can uh, reach out to the SALT Council and ask. And, and Betsy, could you speak to, so, I mean, you and your husband who are so wonderful to help out with the forms and the actual installation, that's wonderful. You had said something about the fire department also installs yeah. them. They, they have done some and I, whether this is, you know, I, I have no idea if it's sort of uh, sort of serendipitous. They all they install regularly those um, street numbers. Yep. That where people want you know an e quick identification of their address, and I think sometimes when they do those, they piggyback if there's a need and, or a perceived need or a conversation about the lockbox. They've just installed them. Um, and this is hearsay and it's infrequent, so I don't want to you know, give the, uh, create the image that this is an ongoing set program that the fire department runs. They may well, but uh, again, these intergroup communications are not at the highest level, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Yep. Um, okay, this is Elise. Um, I live in a large apartment building that has seniors and it does have a lot um, one of those boxes outside the building. We have a lot of calls. And um, what I'm wondering is they can get in the building, but does that also, can they get into people's apartments? Let's say somebody fell and can't open the door. That I do know that um, the emergency services in Amherst have uh, some sort of keying capacity where they can open, for example, they can open all the, um, apartments in the Ann Whalen house. They can open all the apartments in the Clark house on oh, an emergency great. basis. So as long as they can get into the building, I think they're, you know, they have access. I wondered about that. Okay, well, that's good to know. Thank you. Okay, any more yeah. questions for Betsy? No. I, I guess uh, before Betsy goes, um, the next item was about um, enhanced 911. Um, so maybe uh, just for, I just have a quick comment is, or info is on Betsy that. Is Betsy the expert on that too? No, but it, it's all related uh, oh, okay. back to, <laughs> to that. Um, so I think Saren had asked about enhanced 911. So I reached out to um, the, uh, Mike. Uh, uh, Curtin, he's the 911 supervisor for the town of Amherst, and he said that they actually have upgraded from the enhanced 911 to what's called NG 911. It's very similar. It's the next generation 911. Um, and uh, he said that one of the great things about NG 911 is the system's ability to provide enhanced location information for um, dispatch. So um, 
you know, traditionally when you call dispatch, you state your name and your address, and then the then the EMT would then you know uh, go to that location. And so with enhanced nine one one, they I, I believe that the dispatch would have like a GPS. Um, and so if you were um, like a computer in front of them that could locate your location. So in the event that you were unable to speak or you didn't know where you were, they could uh, figure out where you are located with their, you know, GPS mm -hmm. technology. And so, you know, and then I guess, you know, the assumption is if then if you had one of these safe entry key boxes, um, you know, that's also registered with the town. Um, and, you know, if you call 911, they, they'll they automatically know where you are. And um, and when they show up to your home or apartment, um, they'll have that um, safe entry box um, there. Um, and so they can, you know, quickly open that um, as they'll have that information in their database and, you know, get inside. Oh, Sarah? Maureen, I have a question. Sure. Mm -hmm. About uh, this 911 call for them to see your GPS location, does it need to be made from a smartphone or just a landline is okay too? I think the landline is okay. Hmm. Yeah. Landline is easier. It's the smartphones that need the GPS rather than what the E911 used to use the landline location information from the phone company. So now they can add the GPS, but I'm sure that they, that the landline is, that's the old technology. So that would be easier, right? Yeah, I think so. So I, yeah. I think it's just wherever you're calling from, you know, if it's a pay phone, a cell phone or a landline, they'll, they'll um, be able to locate your location. Cool. All right, any more yeah, questions? If for you Betsy? need the 911, like you're walking and then something happens and you're calling from your smartphone. Yep. Yeah, so, okay, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah very interesting. Yeah, it thanks, is. Maureen. Well, and thanks for this information, Betsy. Oh, thank, thank you, Betsy. And, and um, good to see you, Myra. Stay yeah. out of trouble. Okay. Okay. So when I said when I said it was in English, everyone needs to know Betsy was Latin teacher at the high school, <laughs> so she didn't speak English. <laughs> Myra, I got called to sub the other morning for eighteen oh days. God. Eighteen days. I think somebody quit at Thanksgiving. They didn't. Even oh my come God. Back. Anyhow, I didn't Did go in. Do? I'd rather. No, of course not. I'd rather do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great to see you. Okay. See you. Be in touch. Bye. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Oh my God. Okay. Um, number three was about sidewalks. Um, did before we did that, um, we did jump. Um, uh, if we want to go in the order of the agenda, did we want to see if there's any ge general public comment period? Oh, I missed that. Is there any? Is there? Are there any public people here? I didn't even know. Um, yeah, so if anyone in the public want, wishes to speak, uh, ra press the raise your hand feature. Okay. All right. Well, if that, pro oh, okay. We got, we got someone. Hold on. Okay. I think it's uh, Tracy. Uh, Tracy, if you could just introduce yourself, it, um, state your name. Hi. Um, Hi, Tracy. I am Tracy Zafian. I'm the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee. And I try to come to your meetings when I can. I thought I'd just introduce myself because it's really hard sometimes when you're out in attendee world out there and you're not on the panel for people to even know that you're around. <laughs> um, and I know I just, there are a number of the items like in terms of your updates and things that I've been watching those too. So I'm interested to listening to the uh, DAC's discussion. And um, including what your interest is on sidewalks. So I, I know I had spoken at a public comment period um, previously at the end of a meeting once. Um, and hopefully I'll come back for a longer discussion in the future at a future meeting. But um, I mean, the Transportation Advisory Committee, we really do think about like the whole transportation network and accessibility, equity, 
all those issues, um, including sidewalks and um, not Oops. just roads. So that's why I'm listening in, but uh, thank you. I thought we had um, communicated about putting you on the agenda for yep. January. I think we talked about February. I have a conflict, but um, oh. absolutely, yeah. Well, and I was I particularly- was January, but- Yeah, I, I met him conference in january ah, okay um, okay but um okay. the thing that's interesting about the sidewalks is and i think i'm still trying to f figure out you know i've been on the transportation advisory committee for a few years but we don't nobody usually asks tac what we think about sidewalks and that to those to us those are pretty crucial too so mm. um good to know that's why i want to have more of those comments. and i know sometimes and i know sometimes some items come to us you know, and you don't necessarily hear about them either. So that's why I think we could have some partnerships, but thanks. No, that's excellent. Thank you for coming. Um, may I just stress one thing? May I just put in yeah. one, put in my or about one thing? I must also stress, it's not just sidewalks. And since you're on the transportation thing, um, bus stops have often, I've climbed through snow banks to get on a bus. That's not good. I just want to put that out there. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's um, get to the next agenda item, which is DPW seeks uh, DAAC recommendations for sidewalk improvements. So I emailed um, members uh, this, um, this inquiry um made by uh the dpw superintendent guilford mooring um so he needs to create a list uh for the town manager's consideration of what sidewalks in town um should be improved on uh should um, have improvements for next year so he's creating a list and he said he would um would um, entertain recommendations from the daac so um if Myra had sent me a couple um, uh, streets that she thought were of, in of interest. Um, I'll, I have um, one too. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's start with the lease. What what yep. what suggestions do you have? All right. Um, the sidewalk in front of Ann Whalen um, is terrible. Um, both sides of it are not good, and some of it's been patched, but not well. Um, so that whole thing when you you know when you turn the corner from the post office to go down to Ann Whalen, Clark House, down that hole, that's a bad sidewalk, especially on the left side. Uh, do you know, understand what I'm, where I'm, uh, it's You're hard for Kellogg, me Kellogg, right? Huh? You're on Kellogg Street, right? Kellogg, it's- Yeah, it uh, seems like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's Kellogg. It's, you know, like, from next to the Unitarian, yeah, um, down that side street, yeah, and yep. also the side street um, from the post office, yeah, 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 Unitarian. Both sides of that yeah. sidewalk are treacherous. Yeah, so I will tell you that uh, with our community uh, CDBG funds, community development, mm -hmm. CD, uh, community development block grant funds, um, the town is going to be redoing those sidewalks. Definitely. Uh, be in starting this spring or summer. Um, well, or are you just talking about on Kellogg? No. Um, if I'm walking to town and I'm passing in front of Ann Whalen and walking toward town from Ann from the from Ann Whalen, and mm -hmm. um, oh, there are houses on the other side. Um, th that was a bad sidewalk. I I don't know how to describe it. Um, I mean, I don't know how to describe the location and let you're on the, you know, um, but it's, there are a lot of elderly people and disabled people who use those sidewalks, mm -hmm. you know, cause it's in front of public housing. Is it the one and, that goes in front of where that new India, the new, uh, taco restaurant is, or does it go behind that? I don't know where the new taco restaurant is. I've never seen it. Um, but it's uh, the street that would bring you out to where the post office is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Kellogg Ave. Okay. I, I can't read street signs, so I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, that's okay. But okay. yeah, so, it's, like, it's like you're in front of Ann Whalen and, you know, you're um, 
then you turn, yeah, I go out the front of Van Whalen and then I go and I turn um, left and I go up toward town. It's like going toward the UU, UU church and the post yeah, office. Yeah, that's Kellogg Avenue. That's Kellogg. Okay, thank you. I didn't realize that's what it was. And that's the one that they're doing, right? They are. Yep. So those are going to okay. be starting construction. I do feel that they will be doing the sidewalk that is directly in front of Ann Wayland uh, mm -hmm. to the drive that brings you to the Bang Center. And they'll be doing mm -hmm. uh, redoing the sidewalk across the street that's along Good. the side of the post office. Oh, because yeah. of the mature oak trees that are on the side of the UU church, uh -huh. um, there, um, I don't believe that section of the sidewalk will be worked on this year. Oh, yeah. um, I, um, the one. town feels that in order to do that side of the sidewalk, those trees will have to be removed. And uh, because of the width, um, is so limiting. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, I, think, I think that the town would love to redo that section of the sidewalk, mm -hmm. um, but wants to be respectful of those um, very mature mm -hmm. uh, trees there. I just think people's safety is really important. And there are so many neighbors who I see struggle on, and I struggle on it myself. Um, that's the one directly, yeah, it's right parallel across the street from Ann Whale and that other side of the sidewalk. That's what you're talking about, right? So, so that side will be completely redone. Okay, um, okay. I'm yep. sorry, Maureen. I'm, oh, I, no, I, no, you're, no. No, apologies. wait, are you talking about the one that's by Stammel String Instruments? I don't know that. Um, I think so. I, yeah. The side I know of that Kellogg right. Street that is the side of the post office. Yeah. That whole stretch is going to be replaced this year. Okay, right. but how far are they going to go? Because they're one going of to my... go to from the post office down to the end of Ann Wayland. Okay, well that okay. Is, yeah, that's good. definitely right. that. But, but right across the street from that too, is that also in the plan? Correct. Directly across the street. Correct. Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's really what the main my my main issue was. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for thank you. So for when I put Kellogg on the list, Maureen, I meant from where you're talking about to Triangle Street. Oh, that's yeah. There's no sidewalk at all. Mm. Um, no. And when there is, it's sort of like not demarcated. It's just sort of the edge of the road. And you're sort of supposed to know it's a sidewalk. Um, oh. And when you go from Triangle, to the place where you're talking about, it's a big hill. Yeah. There's, you know, it's hard to see over it, I think, for cars. You oh, have to bad. walk yeah. on yeah. what isn't a sidewalk. And that's the one of the places that I thought was pretty critically um, difficult to navigate. So it should be on, if you're coming from the post office, if you could continue on that side of the street, <laughs> Kellogg turns, and the once it turns, there's nothing mm -hmm. um, that goes up to. Mm -hmm. on, so it would be on the left side as you're going from the post office all the way to Triangle Street. Okay, all right. That that's a that's a good suggestion, Myra. Um, yeah. And the other place that I thought of in town was um, Prey Street from the place where the two flashing beacons are going to be. Prey Street is an L-shaped street and there isn't any continuous sidewalk connecting Triangle Street to East Pleasant. There's like oh, a lot, yeah. a parking lot. There's like, um, you would have to go not on the side where all the offices are, but on the other side, um, it's it's very difficult, like there's parking lots and you don't know what's a street and what's a sidewalk. Um, is anybody familiar with that? People don't walk there. No, no, no. But now that we're putting those flashing beacons in to be able to circumvent or, or at least not have anything to do with the, uh, the rotary, the roundabout, um, walking from one end of prey to the other or in, through that 
right angle street is not easy. I don't even think it would be terribly easy in a, a wheelchair or a scooter because there's up curbs, down curbs, parking lot. Um, I mean, you, I think walking in the street is probably the safest thing to do. Um, anyway, if somebody could look at that, I think that's a, a place that, although it's low traffic, um, and I, I don't know if it can be justified because it's low traffic, but for somebody like me coming off of Triangle Street to go through there to get into town, I would need to use that. And it's really difficult. So anyway, that, that's one of the places. And then there are probably streets all over. Um, I wrote about High Street um, with, it's gonna be a problem for the town because it's a lot of routes that, that is the problem. Um, so, and it's also high off of the street, but there is a man who uses a wheelchair who goes in the street because he can't get up onto the sidewalk. And if he could mm. get on it, he wouldn't be able to traverse it because it's so full of different levels from roots. And then on the other end, there's no way for him to get off of it. So he doesn't use the sidewalk at all. I think his wife told me when he goes into town in his wheelchair, he's in the street the whole way. And well, that's, that's, that's not really no. a big deal. So, and, and especially because these days High Street is such a mess in the street that I'm not even sure how he is doing that very easily with his chair. It's a very uh, bumpy road. All right, thank, thank you, Meyer. Do any other uh, members have uh, suggested sidewalks uh, for improvement for next year? What about Amity Street? Has that been? Am anything on Amity Street? Um, okay, so is that what you're suggesting is to um, um, make improvements to the sidewalk on Amity Street? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, especially, I know it's kind of low traffic, but when you're going down Amity Street, you know, um, there's a spot, there's no sidewalk. If the sidewalk quits, you're going past the library um, on the right side of the, no, on the left side of that, there's no sidewalk, not the library, further down. Okay. There's no um, sidewalk there. And it's just patchy and bad anyway. It's really treacherous uh, as far, the further down Amity Street you go, the worse it gets. Are you talking about the north side of the street or the south side of the street? I don't know north south. The library is um, on the north side of Amity Street. South side. Okay. It's terrible. Okay. The further down you go, the worse it gets. It's, you know, and I've seen people walk down there and I I use it once a week. It's bad. So that's a suggestion that, you know. Thank you, Elise. Tori has raised her hand. Tori? Um I don't think this is part of the town because I because I don't think Route 9 counts because it's a highway but I'm wondering if there's been any talk at all about putting a sidewalk in on Route 9 to connect the neighborhoods um, um so actually uh Mass DOT is doing uh some improvements to uh, Northampton Road um, that is also known as Route 9. And I believe it does include uh, sidewalk improvements and adding a sidewalk on the, no, on the south side of uh, Northampton Road and to um, make any, um, uh, it may make any improvements needed on the existing sidewalk. Tori, are you talking about east of Southeast Street? Yeah, like I'm, on Road? The south. I'm on the other side of Southeast and Fort River. So right. I'm like on Belgertown. Oh, okay. Belgertown that's Road. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Route 9 um, by Belgertown Road. All right. Uh, let me write that down. Well, Route 9 is Belgertown Road in one place and College Street in another place. Like over here, it's College Street. Where she is, it's Belchertown Road. And where you're talking about it's know. Northampton. But it's I all the same road. It was Northampton somewhere else. <laughs> but 
Yeah, west of 116, it's Northampton Road. East of um, 116, it's, I believe, College Street down to Southeast Street. And then east of that, it's Belchertown Road. Belchertown Road, which is where I'm talking about. Okay. All right. That's a good suggestion, Tori. Unfortunately, I do feel that that is under, you know, ownership and 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 management of mass dot but we can right. certainly add it to the list you know maybe the town could um suggest it. Ask, well suggest uh suggest or we'll ask if it's on some list with mass dot to do in the future and if it's not on the list we could um, request that the dot consider that um sarah i, I think i saw yes. you raise your hand yeah uh, i uh, oh experience a problem, not in Amherst, but in Hadley. But this maybe could be like added to the regulations the town has. Uh, I When I go shopping in Hadley at Whole Foods, in, in front of Whole Foods, they have several wheelchair accessible places. So if you go to the one that you can, it's not right in front of Whole Foods, but further down, like close to Michael's, there's a handicap place. But when you get out of your van, there is no curb cut. You cannot Correct. get on the sidewalk in front of the store. And David I has a picture of that. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. My you, husband took I a picture of it as one of the stupid things that they've built. He has a whole collection of ridiculous pictures, and that is in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like, for example, the town of Amherst <laughs> might say, wherever there is a handicap parking, the sidewalk across from that has to have a curb cut. So people can safely get across the street and get find themselves on the sidewalk rather than Absolutely. stay on the road to find the closest curb cut to get on the sidewalk. Yep. Yeah, I don't know that it's, I, I think it's just a, it's a point of information for when they build curb cuts and sidewalks, they have to line up and ridiculously enough, they don't always. Uh -uh. All right, yeah. uh, that's a really good suggestion, Saren, um, to sidewalk. Okay, um, M Marty, do you have any thoughts? No, other than that actually is a code. It's just not mm -hmm. that the developer who did that didn't meet code. Right. So if we want to follow up on that, I wonder what steps we should take. You have to go to the owner of the, that's a private property. So that's not something the town can solve. It's up to the owner. So the thing to do is to make a complaint to the owner of the property. That's how, how it starts. I mean, you can make a complaint with, I would start with the company that owns the property first. And if you don't get any satisfaction from them, you can file a complaint with the Department of Justice. Yeah, and to fix this won't even take too much money either. Just, you know, tear down part of yeah. the sidewalk. Well, and do I don't really know there. that. I don't know that. What looks like it might be a really simple fix is not. Oh. Um, you can contact the town of Hadley and find out who owns the property. Okay. I think I should do that. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Next on the agenda is old business, right? No, nope. um, status of uh, fiscal year 2023 capital project request. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, I have some uh, news. Um, the planning department is requesting $30,000 to conduct, uh, to inspect the current conditions of all existing town owned pedestrian traffic signals in relation hey. to their oh. audible functionality <laughs> and to repair and or replace all damaged or broken audible components identified in the sure. said inspection. Whoa. So good uh, for you or good for well, us or good for whoever made it happen. Yeah. So uh, Dave Zomack uh, and Chris Brestrup uh, put this request in. 
Um, and so, you know, I, I told Dave last week that um, when I was informed of this, that, that, you know, on behalf of the DAC, that they very much appreciate this request. So, um, so I, uh, that is great news. Um, and so it will be part of their request uh, cycle. So the Joint Capital Planning Committee um, will be reviewing all requests. Um, and so um, I, I don't know when that request, uh, when that um, sort of review process starts. Um, I'll certainly keep my eyes out for that. And uh, perhaps, I, to be honest, I've never really paid attention to that process in, in previous years. So I, I don't know if public comments are um, um, allowed, but perhaps. Um, if it's, if it's a are, public meeting, which it is, it, public comment is allowed. Oh, OK. Well, that's great news. So perhaps uh, members would like to go to that meeting and, and advocate that, that the town council approves so that So the fact that it's being done that way is a little problematic to me because they don't have a choice about this. This is not something that's remotely discretionary on their part. It's not like, should we put a new swing set in Groff Park or should we do this or that? That they don't have, they don't have a choice about this. And my, when I was on the Joint Capital Planning Committee, we did a lot of things that needed to be improved but they were discretionary. So we used to, you know, talk about what we were gonna do to improve the town. This is failure of maintenance and it's sort of a different category. So, I mean, it's nice that they're gonna spend the money but I go back to a comment Marty made months ago about, about this. And this is really not joint capital planning. And it's certainly in a, you know, a, a study to see what they messed up. I, I don't know. I somehow, who's on that, Pat? Because th there is no choice about this. Yeah, I don't know who's on that committee. I think Kathy Shane is, and she would be a good person to contact so I can okay. get that information to you. Okay. All right. I mean, I don't know how anybody else Kathy feels about when it. When that meet, when um, these meetings will um, happen. Or she, if she doesn't have an exact date, could she say it'll start in February? Okay. Um, or I'll just obsessively look at the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Between the two of us. <laughs> no, it would be good. It would be good for um, for us to to let her know that. Whereas some of what they do is very discretionary, and it has to do with you know the five year plan and all that. This isn't. Okay. Maureen, you said it was, this is Tori, you said it was part of the 2023 budget? Yeah, Does so, that... yeah, so that would start in July 1st of this um, coming year. 22. Oh, oh yeah, okay. sorry, so... it, it gets confusing, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 20, the fiscal years always start in July. But... <laughs> yeah, and, right. and then other items. Um, oh, actually, that are... that's when they're going to study it. So the money will they're not going to look into this until July. And then whatever recommendations are made, they might not be funding them until the next July, depending on the cost of the study. I think it would include, it, it, the request is for both, is to uh, do an audit and, and then to uh, repair or replace um, any um, damage or broken audible components. So we have to wait that long to have- well, Yeah, that's my problem with it. That's, that's why it shouldn't be in capital planning, but- No, no, we gotta do this urgently. It's already been almost a year since we started talking to them about it. That, we can't right. wait another two years for that to happen. Uh -uh. Maureen, I don't know. I'm interested in how else they could fund some, at least the study. And I bet there's no money around. Um, I don't know what there is in the DPW budget for the study. Um, Pat, do you know anything about the DPW budget? Uh, no, but I will do my best to find out. And Maureen, can you send me any information you have um, 
about uh, the joint cap, what they're putting into joint capital planning, how, and that it's Dave Zomack, just DPW sure, yep. budget for current for current repair. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you, Pat. And thanks, Maureen. Um, and, uh, and then other um, items that are part of the requests um, uh, is uh, the ADA Improvement Funds, um, the, um, the uh, facilities will be adding that again to their um, capital re requests. Um, and so th those would be for improvements of town facilities, like town buildings, so the inside of the building and, you know, the outside, you know, it could be like the parking lot. Or, so the inside and the outside. So um, how much money is that? Was that going to be $50,000 a year? That needs to be clarified of what that amount is. And so um, Jeremiah LaPlante, he's our facilities manager, will be asking um, our finance director, Sean Hannon, uh, Sean Mangano. Um, how much uh, money uh, that will be included. It's um, that item is part of the overall facilities um, um, budget. So he just needs to, they, he just needs to sort th that out. Um, and so once that is sorted out, I can let you all know um, what that amount is. And then- Is that also, where you were saying maybe the assisted listening devices would come from? Is that what you were- Talking Actually, about. so that's the third item. The third uh -huh, item okay. um, is uh, assisted listening devices for all rooms um, at the bank center, for all public rooms at the bank center. And um, and the cool thing about it is that um, there would be one dedicated permanent um, assisted, assisted listening device. I actually forget the names of the rooms, but there's a large, it might be called the large activity room. Uh, there would be assisted listening devices that's dedicated for that room, and then there would be another um, assisted listening device uh, devices that would be put on like a, a cart that can be wheeled around, and so they can be transferred to different rooms for different events and, and meetings. Um, so it, it provides sort of a flexible um, uh, situation for utilizing them throughout the bang center. And there's um, multiple assisted listening devices. So if there's multiple events, um, they could be um, sort of dispersed to multiple rooms at a given time. Cool. Yeah. And what, where's the budget for that? That again, it's going to be under the facilities, um, facilities department um, request and and, um, and so that the assisted listening device request was um, really uh, fleshed out when we had a audible consultant come and meet with myself and um, our IT director, our facilities director, and Helen from the senior services um, that's located at the bank center. We walked around with the this audible uh, consultant that uh, provided services for the city of Northampton last year for assistive listening devices. And so our cost estimate is based on um, that consultant's um, um, time visiting Amherst. So it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, the, the cost estimate is, is very specific to the bank center. So is this through joint capital planning or is this a separate item? That's what I don't understand. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yep, that uh, all three items I mentioned would be going through the joint capital planning committee process. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. All right. So we have to stay tuned because we have three items there. And they said they were going to dedicate some money toward accessibility every year, right? At some point, they did say that. Correct. Perfect. OK, great. All right, so now we have an update. We already had the update about the accessible signals. We Can we get an update about the North Common? We wrote a letter. We submitted it. Uh, I have heard nothing back. I don't know if you have. Um, so uh, Dave Zomax said, um, to me uh, via email and said to Paul that he, uh, actually, let me just pull it up because I don't want to misquote him. Um, give me a moment. 
sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he says that uh, Chris Brestrup and, and himself, Dave Zomack, will incorporate the North Common parking recommendations into uh, their work to move the project along with DPW. So, um, so yeah, so Dave Zomack and Chris Brestrup are you know spearheading the North Common project um, with you know DPW as they finalize the project design and um, you know they uh, I attended their last meeting to sort of recap of you know what was stated in that memo and and uh, so staff is going to um, rework the design to accommodate uh, you know that there is. Um, ADA parking spaces provided um, in the vicinity of the of the town hall. So they'll be starting to um, finalize that plan um, in January and February. So um, there. Um, so uh, when there is updates, um, I can certainly let you know um, so you could uh, review that before it is finalized. Did they make any comments about Marty's recommendation about um, Main Street, about the inaccessible, accessible entrance to Town Hall? That was all that Dave said um, was what I had. Because um... her recommendation is tangential, but not specific to the North Common. So I wondered if they, they didn't make, I wondered if they made any comments about that. They did not? No. Again, um, Dave Zelmeck read your memo and is going to incorporate your, your recommendations um, from that memo into um, the town's work uh, to find as they finalize this um, design. Um, and so th they'll be working on this starting in January. So, you know, they, they haven't had a chance to... Um, okay. So we have to stay tuned for more. Yeah, so stay tuned, yep. Okay, all right, and um, Pomeroy. Um, they you are attended supposed... the November 29th town hall meeting. I did, meeting, cause I, I, I made I heard a comment. You. Yep. Um, I, um, I the, the town council is, has asked that one of the next steps for that project um, be to come to the DAAC with the design for Pomeroy. The DAAC was not on the list of next steps, um, things that they needed to do. So I think, I hope that they heard from the uh, town council that they need to come to the DAAC and that they need to engage somebody who has expertise in exactly how to build a, a, the most accessible intersection that they can given the topography and the constraints that they have. And I think I heard some people, Elisa anyway, Alicia, Alicia. Um, Elisa. Elisa, I'm sorry. That's who's right. not gonna be on the town council anymore, but she was pretty clear you know, that there needed to be some conversation with consultant. I don't know where the town council is about that. I heard, you know, a lot of goodwill, but the goodwill from the council doesn't always get translated into action by the people who are working on projects. So I don't know where that's going to go, but I was a little bit concerned that they did have a numbered list of next steps and consultation with the DAAC was not on the list, even after the conversation that took place at the town council last May when they approved it. Okay. I don't know if you noticed that it wasn't on the list, but I'm, I'm sure you did. So I don't know when they're going to come to us. I hope that they do and I hope I mean, I will be happy to provide 
Maureen, I'll be happy to provide you with the name of somebody that I think would be a good consultant. I don't know if she has a fee. I don't know if she would do it gratis. I don't know any of that. Sure, but yes, I know, I'm sorry? Sure, send me that information. Guilford Mooring did email me um, after the town council meeting about uh, ha um, the blind consultant. Um, and I responded saying, you know, you could reach out to, I think his name was Mike Dion. Or D Dion. Yeah, there was somebody better. Well, I had I suggested that he could reach out to him and he could, uh, so he works for the mass commission on the blind so um i suggested that he probably would you know uh yeah i can get you i can get you a better name but um but i i'm just interested in them doing it because there are you know there are ways to build it that are better than other ways to build it and i don't think that the ways to build it if it's two feet this way or two feet that way or sloping this way at the curb cut or, you know, this kind of a, you know, um, it, we're not talking about big changes that would cost money. We're talking about placement of things they were already gonna do. So I think it's, you know, in the angle of when you turn the corner, you know, how many, you know, should it, what should it be exactly when they make the curb? Um, I don't know. I mean, that maybe that's a big engineering thing. I don't know. But anyway, um, as long as they do it, that's good. And I will send you the name. Well, I'll, I'll find out from her if she, what her story is, but she is the person to contact. Her name is Meg Robertson. She's nationally known in this field. She used to run the Commission for the Blind um, uh, Mobility Department and retired in March but she knows more than anybody and she's nationally known. Okay, um, do we have anything else? What about the uh, representative from DAC with the Jones Library? Oh yeah, um, thank you. I had, there were th three, so many responses. Um, uh, Marty and Elise and Tori. Tori, all, um, I don't know if you all applied. I did. I did. And I don't, what did they tell you about the process? Nothing. You just apply and they'll yeah. get back to you. I have Typical heard town. Anything. This is just like all the other town applications. Okay. Where do you apply? I miss that. Um, it's uh, on the Johns Library site. Well, it goes back to the town application site. Okay. It's a little hard to navigate. I actually had to get into, I had to contact, um, what the heck is her name? Angela uh, Wolf. Yeah, I actually had to email her and ask her to send me the link. Okay. It is but a she, little kludgy. So mad. I think it's great. And I don't think that it's a, there is no DAAC official representative to the library um, board. No. There doesn't need to be, but the fact that so many of you want to do it, I don't think you replicate each other at all. You just, your library users who think about things in a different way than other people do and have different yep. expertise. And I think it's awesome. And I hope they'll take all of you. Well, we'll see. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I'm so happy that so many of you wanted to do it. It's great. Yeah. Okay, um, the other thing is that's new is I got a letter from Paul Bockelman on Friday, Friday, um, in which he said that um, he was gonna be hiring a new director for the Department of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, DEI, and um, that that person would be working very closely with um, the planning department with the DAAC. It was unclear to me um, what he intends 
to do with the DAAC if he's moving us to diversity, equity, and inclusion, or if he's keeping us. And so I wrote back that we don't want to lose Maureen because she knows a whole lot. And you can't just say, oh, here's somebody who, you know, who is the new director who doesn't know anything that just would not serve the DAAC well. And then I said to him, if he was going to be doing anything like that, we would want to have some, you know, could we have some representation on the hiring committee to even bring up the topics from a, you know, ask questions. And I think what he would find is that most people who are interested in diversity, equity, and inclusion do not know anything about uh, accessibility. That's not what that usually means. It's a logical thing to think about if you're an administrator of a town, but I don't think that I, I, the expertise is not similar. Um, so I don't know what he's gonna do with us. And I don't know if we have any say about it, but I thought you might wanna put in some input and we have a discussion about it. Myra, when you say you don't know what he's gonna do with it, do you mean ending the committee or something? I'm not clear oh, about- Oh, no, no, he's not ending us. No, yeah, no, 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 okay. no, yeah. no, no. But he might be moving us from working with Maureen, who's in the planning department. Oh, I see. But you're working yeah. with somebody else. It was unclear. I'm not sure he's clear. I think he's thinking out loud. Um, but I wanted to bring to the committee's attention that he did send me this memo. I sent it to everybody. I didn't send it to you, Pat. I'm sorry. That's um, okay. That that has to do with um, you know the fact that he's thinking about accessibility as, as diversity, equity, and inclusion. And technically, it's not a bad thought. No. Practically, okay, okay. it might not be a good thought at all. It all depends on the expertise of the people that he hires. But usually diversity, equity, and inclusion people, and I do know some of them, they don't, they don't know anything about uh, handicapped accessibility. It's not the focus that they've had. So maybe he'll find somebody who knows about both, but I was just, um, I just thought you should know that he's thinking about us as part of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Myra, could you send me uh, yeah. his email and your response? <clears throat> sure. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't think to send it to you. That's Does okay. anybody have any comments about it? Anything you think we should do? Anything he said he was going to be hire putting the get committee together for hiring in uh, January, I think. No, no, nobody. Well, I mean, uh, if he wants to use some other staff member as a liaison for the DAC like Maureen is, I don't know if we can, we have any say in that. Well, I don't know if we do either, but if we want to, we could try to. And if we <laughs> right. don't want to, you know, I mean, DAAC doesn't have to be under any specific department. You know, like when we started, we were under Epi Bodhi who was in the health department, you know, right. and then it got moved to planning. It could be anywhere. Um, it has to be, the liaison has to be somebody who knows about and cares about, cares deeply about all these crazy issues we deal with that other people don't ever think about. Well, that's why we don't want to lose Maureen. <laughs> right. Well, that's sort of what I wrote. That is pretty, but, pretty specifically but is, what I wrote. But the thing is, from what I read in the papers, Maureen is now one of the senior planners, too. So that means that doesn't come easy. They put more work on her basket, more and more. So yeah. maybe he's thinking of, you know, how to divide the work between the planners evenly. So that could be. In a way, I feel like a, I don't feel comfortable interfering with his internal decisions. 
Hmm. That's how I feel. Okay. Can Corey, <laughs> raise your hand. Maureen, do you know anything? So <laughs> I, I um, don't know um, anything more than what Myra has been informed um, and, and everyone. So everyone saw the email and Paul um, presented to the town council on December 9th, his reorganization proposal uh, for the um, diversity, equity, inclusion um, department where they'll be hiring a director and an assistant director and uh, they will be providing uh, assistance to various boards and the DAAC is listed. And on one of the slides that Paul presented to the town council, it says the Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion will work closely with the planning department on disability issues and implementation of uh, the strategic plan and the transition plan. So although I don't know, you know, much about this just yet. Um, you know, there could be some adjustments of of um, who is the staff liaison to this committee moving forward. But I um, believe that the planning department, uh, if it's me or maybe another staff person, will have uh, a significant. Will continue to have a significant involvement with with this committee moving forward. So I, I don't think that the planning department will be um, will be going away and will be um, providing an active role for this committee. And um, you know, some things in the transition plan, you know, the, the things that I've been fo focusing on, and and I will say honestly, I, I don't have a lot of time to devote to the transition plan, as I'm working on several other projects at the same time. Is that I, I've been focusing on. Um, the physical improvements that could be done, um, mm -hmm. ar the architectural improvements that can be done to sidewalks and to the buildings and, and that sort of stuff. That uh, I have not been able to uh, spend any time devoted to, um, you know, what policies um, should be updated, like HR policies, uh, what things should be updated, what kind of information should be updated on the website. Um, that are educational and informational for people with disabilities. Um, there's a whole uh, and, and and there's uh, all um, a massive scope of things that are recommended in the transition plan that I think uh, would be beneficial to have another um, set of eyes on to help. So I, I think having the Office of Dis uh, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion um, would be a great additive uh, to have um that uh, to have working towards um the implementation strategies from the transition plan so so I, I think you get both you get someone from that office and you get to keep uh the planning department so i think it's a win-win to be honest but um okay. and you know we don't know all the information and it does seem that paul might know might, might not know all the information just yet and i think it was his way of uh, being a, providing you a courtesy. It was in his slideshow. Yeah. He probably felt yeah. like, oh, I didn't even let Myra know. I probably should let her know before she finds out in the paper or word yeah. of mouth. Yeah. So I think it'll all be worked out and, and it will be to everyone's advantage. Okay. All right. So we'll let it play out. But I did ask that we are involved in some way. And he said he would let me know um, when he was forming the committee um, and we can see if anybody would like to be on the hiring committee. I would consider doing it for sure. I don't know if anybody else wants to do it. Um, but um, anyway, I just thought that I would let you all know that we are um, likely to have other people working with us. Let's put it that way. And that doesn't mean no Maureen, but it might mean other people too. And it might be a really good thing. It depends who it depends who they hire and what they see as their mission. Yeah, and you know, I will say so, you know, as I'm advocating for disability access improvements with the town, you know, I sometimes have to remind people um, it's not just the law. 
but you know, having the law on your side is always good, but it, it is about promoting, you know, inclusion and equity. Um, mm -hmm. And so to have someone with that official role to promote that kind of um, uh, um, I idealism, um, I think it is really important to have have that role, uh, that that position, have an active uh, relationship with this committee and to um, communicate that to all departments about, you know, equity and inclusion. It, it, it's, um, it definitely, uh, you know, it, it's geared to all marginalized communities, um, minorities, uh, the LGBTQ uh, populations, women, and persons with disabilities. Um, so I, I think it adds, um, I think it, it's a great advantage for the town to add, add, um, um, add these positions and to um, vocalize um, the need for inclusion and equity, um, particularly for, for persons with disabilities. Okay. All right. So um, nicely said. Um, anyway, so I will let you know if I know anything else. And just so you know, we did send a letter, a reiteration of last year's snow plowing letter um, to Dave Zomek um, to make sure it had to do with um, the shared liability or the shared responsibility, I should say, for businesses and the town to keep the sidewalks clean and that we were concerned last year with COVID, but it, and it's not as much of an issue, but it still is an issue about, you know, if the business is out of business or something like that, who's gonna be cleaning? So we asked that the town really step up and take care of stuff they don't even necessarily think is their own responsibility because some of the businesses aren't there anymore. And um, I didn't get a response to that. I don't know if you did. But anyway, we did weigh in on snow removal, as well as the stoplights, as well as the North Common. So we've we've been busy weighing in. <laughs> Have you heard back about the snow? Should not. No. Okay. Maybe we ought to not weigh in on anything this month. <laughs> But um, anyway, does anybody have anything else that they would like to bring up? One thing I want to give a credit, another credit to Maureen is every time I re uh, read about a project that the town is going to uh, start, they always give credit that to our committee that we have reviewed the plans and approved them or something like that. Before that, I don't remember reading, giving any credit to anything that it was even brought up to us. So that's something Maureen established that I think. Well, thank you. <laughs> and yeah. Myra and the whole committee. I will say that it's since I have to go to all these town council meetings, at least lately, it, it's, it's, it's 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 a good feeling when they when I hear town council members um, you know uh, mention the DAAC and you know mention specific things that are in 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 the memos that you provide. So um, well, that's you know, good because I don't go to all of them and I don't hear it all. I just keep sending stuff and I don't know where it goes. <laughs> Yeah, no, they are listening. And, you know, okay. I, I also go to all, you know, the planning board and the CRC. It seems that I go to meetings every night, but, um, the, you know, <laughs> these boards and, and staff, uh, the planning department, I, you know, I, I'm always, I, I sometimes overhear Dave Zomack say, oh, you know, the DAC, you know, uh, the DAAC is recommending this, or we need to make sure cool. we get their input. That uh, you know, it, it's definitely a uh, a nice feeling to um, yeah. hear that. Yeah, that's are... very cool. So keep yeah. up the rabble rousing, people. This is good. <laughs> okay. Also, we are down a member. Do we know what's happening with that? Do not. Okay. 
I have a letter from last year that I could resurrect <laughs> to Paul about when we needed members the last time. Do it. Because um, <laughs> we, uh, Xander had to resign in August. So it's been quite some time. And I haven't heard anything about any new members. And I don't know if you have. And from what I read in that memo, Angela Mills' job has been cut to half time. Is that right? What? Doesn't no, it I say don't. part of the know. money is is the town manager administrative? No. Um, that's not Angela yeah, Mills. That's that was, else. was that in the Gazette article? No. I no, think it was in his to, memo. Yeah, I think that has to do with Jen Moisten's job. Oh. Um, okay. where she likely may become the assistant director of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And maybe ah, okay. he's commenting about her current job and she, her job is partially funded through the town manager's office. Okay. And then, um, and then partially funded through the human resources department. Okay, um, it named More information position. than you need to know, but I, I don't think Angela's hours uh, will be reduced. In fact, no, I'm sure no. that on a weekly basis, she works more than she wants to. <laughs> okay, uh, so I guess the question is, she's the person who usually knows the most about the personnel um, issues because she has to let us know. So I suppose is that something, Maureen, that I should do, or is that something we should leave alone, or is that something you would want to do? I could send her an email asking. They are aware that there is a vacancy, and they do have a, uh, I think it's like a community form that people can fill out if they want to, uh, if they're interested in joining the DAAC. Um, so I, I know the town manager is aware of it, including Angela Mills, and okay. um, it might not necessarily be a high priority of the town manager's office in context of all no, I'm the sure things it isn't. that they are accomplishing. So yeah. it might be one of those, uh, we'll just have to give a little patience and, and eventually, um, you know, they will take this up. You know, they, they, they've been trying to fill other boards and committees. Um, so this, you know, this is okay. likely probably on the roster to handle in the new year. <clears throat> the only reason I know is that they, I ask is that there was another candidate when we took Xander, there was somebody else and it wasn't all that long ago I mean, it certainly wasn't when Xander had to leave the committee, wasn't all that long ago. And I just wondered if they would ever just recontact that other candidate, but apparently they didn't. So I think technically they need to fill out the form. I think that's how. Um, yeah, they it, have to refill out the cap. The other thing is, if you know people who you would like to see on this committee is to talk to them directly and get them to apply for the position and only that position, not like putting down three different choices. Because if he sees people who de definitely want to work on DAAC, then I think that would get him moving. Okay. I don't know anybody right now, but if you do, okay, so we'll wait till January and see what happens in the new year coming up on year three, year three of COVID. <laughs> I hope. We oh do. I God. did uh, email you meeting minutes from October the 19th. Oh my God. I believe yeah, I, I don't even know where those are. Well, that's where, okay. Where, well, we have to approve. Oh boy. Which, did maybe, everybody maybe read all I those minutes? Know. I mean, if everybody's ready to approve minutes, I will be happy to do it. I just, um, I didn't even see them. Mm. Is everybody ready to approve minutes? I can abstain. That was tabled from last month, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, well, I read those and the only correction I had was Saren and my Yeah, name. sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did write about that. I guess I read those. 
And, yeah, and, so we could yeah. do, I'm not yeah, ready to yeah. do November, but we, um, yeah, September and October, I do remember reading. Did anybody else read them? Thanks for reminding me, Tori, I did read them because I sent a comment about that. I just didn't find them this time. Um, do we want to, does anyone have comments about September or October other than the names? Nope. Do, can I get a motion to approve September and October? I'll make a motion to approve them. September and October's minutes. I'll second. Okay, can we have a roll call about approving? Marty? Approved. Saren? Yes. Lise? Yes. Um, Tori? Yes. And me, yes. Okay, so that's five. And the November ones I didn't read. I didn't so email it, them. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, they, almost it, done. I'm almost done with them. Oh, you know, one, uh, one thing is my name gets mixed up. My last name, it seems sorry. like we are sisters. Tori and I are sisters, but we really <laughs> aren't. Sorry. I think I, I think my slight <laughs> dyslexia, uh, I, I don't know. It, it, I, your last names are both four letters and they both begin with D. I, well, I'm really mine sorry. is five. <laughs> I'm, but anyway, it's all right. As long as you know that I was there and present and, Sar and Sarim was there and present and it gets corrected, I don't mind. <laughs> well, I, I now, I'm now I'm becoming slightly paranoid about the spelling of your name. So hopefully, hopefully I won't misspell them, at least not for a while. Well, it wasn't misspelled. It was just paired with Sarim's name. Yeah, the, the name was, was Tori. Oh, maybe yeah, we should just them. be sisters. Yeah, yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> I'd be happy to have a sister like you. Aww. Well, thank you very Aww. much. Aww. That's I'd be nice. happy to have a sister That's like sweet. you. Too. We've <laughs> known folks, each other a very long time. I know, I know. <laughs> and your kids, you know, I know them before they were even born. Oh my goodness. Wow. We're going, that's going back 25 years. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> wow. Wow, is For Keith 25? Time. Keith is 25. Holy Toledo. Uh, what's he doing now? He's working in Boston. Wow, amazing. Yeah, he's, he's a happy, happy kid. <laughs> like well, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well, we're that's... right on schedule to adjourn okay. our time. Great. Uh, which is Great. No, this uh, which is great. I feel unusual. Um, and if I'm looking at the calendar correctly, the next meeting will be January 11th. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And yeah. happy holidays to all. Oh, yes. happy holidays yes. to all of you. Yeah, happy yes. holidays. Happy holidays. And thanks Thank to all you. of you for all your input and all your work. And I was so happy to see so many people interested in the library. I think that's great. Because mostly people aren't interested in doing anything. And I was, it was just, it was great. Maureen, I would you I... mind sending me a link to that application so I don't forget to do the it? The Jones Library. Yep, I'll do that. Yeah. Now. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because I hope I did it correctly because <laughs> I didn't get any kind of response, you know. I don't think you usually don't do. get a response. You don't, that they even got it or anything. <clears throat> okay. Then I'll just. Forget about it until I hear. You Thank go. you. Be cool. All right. All right, yeah. folks. We'll All have, right. have a Thank happy you. holiday. Yeah, happy holiday. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Holidays. Next month. New